I'm looking forward to wearing it next year when it's finished. Beautiful joins, like I just love how smooth all of these squares connect. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Nenets. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today's podcast episode number 32 where I'll be sharing what I've been knitting for the past two weeks. In today's episode I'll be covering two finished objects, the first of which is my finished sweater that I'm wearing. I'll also share some updates on some of the projects I've been knitting including my Stella quilt cushion and I have a few acquisitions to share as well. So starting right away with my finished Ollie sweater, I do want to start with it. I will preface that I'm not feeling too well today. I think I might be getting sick or just feeling a little bit under the weather. So I might try to keep this episode a little bit shorter and if my mood seems kind of subdued, then that's the reason why. But I am really excited to talk about this finished sweater that I'm wearing. The Ollie sweater I have been working on for a few months now. I started it in November and just finished it this past month. It is a pattern by Marita Harvey who goes by second knit on Instagram and it's a drop shoulder oversized pullover with two by two rib details as well as a curved hem detail. This sweater is a DK weight knit. The recommended yarn in the pattern is Sanus Garn Pure Gint. However, I used a different yarn for my sweater. I actually used two yarns held together and I used a combination of fingering weight wool. The first is a hand dyed yarn by Woolberry Fiber Co. This is the color Rabbit Rump in the Berry Cozy Sock Base. This is a two ply, 80% merino, 20% nylon sock yarn. And I held it with this one ply of Birch and Lily Birch Surrey. This is a lace weight Surrey alpaca silk blend. This is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. And this is in a 50 gram skein and there's 328 yards in this skein. And this is a classic 100 gram skein and there are 400 yards in the single skein. So these are the two yarns that I use and together they combine to make this fabric here. You can see that the yellowness from the undyed Surrey kind of dominated the white brightness of the Woolberry yarn. So it has sort of like a creamy tone, whereas if I just used the rabbit rump, it probably would have been more of a pure white color. So holding those two yarns together, I knit this entire sweater on four millimeter needles using three and a half millimeter needles for most of the ribbed accents. I did make the size two, which was the suggested size for my bust circumference. The suggested ease on this pattern is a lot. It's about 33 centimeters, which is 13 inches. Very oversized, but it is a drop shoulder construction and it just has that very slouchy, cozy fit. Making size two for myself, I did end up shortening the body and the sleeves a little bit, and I ended up using a total of 300 grams of the Woolberry Fiber Co. fingering weight yarn, so three exact skeins. This is my fourth skein left over. And then for the Surrey Alpaca lace, I ended up using 176 grams of the yarn, which is uh, about three and a half skeins of this lace weight yarn. I will get into my finished gauge and measurements in just a little bit. I did want to talk about the sleeve construction because last time I showed you this on the podcast, I was not working on the sleeves yet, or was I? I was either had just started a sleeve or hadn't started them yet, and that was all I had left to do. So obviously since then, I have completed both sleeves. Because this is a drop shoulder construction, you do pick up to make your sleeves, and I worked them on a magic loop, and there are some decreases as you go along the sleeve because it's drop shoulder and the body is very wide you can see these sleeves ended up pretty short which was nice they went nice and quick I followed the directed decrease rate in the pattern and then once I got to the end of the decreases I realized that the sleeve was definitely long enough for me to just go ahead and start the ribbing right there in the pattern it does say to knit in straight stockinette a little bit longer to reach the desired sleeve length but I have short arms so everything is a little bit less knitting for me there is two by two ribbing on the sleeve cuffs and then I finished it with two rounds of double knitting and then a sewn tubular bind off, which I love. I think it looks really great. And I like the sleeve width. It's not too tapered, but it's also not too wide, which is nice. It's kind of, it's pretty perfect, I would say, for this style of sweater. I really like this kind of loose sleeve style, but it's not really loose where it's like hanging everywhere. I don't think I'd be able to pull it up while doing the dishes that easily. That might be the one thing that would frustrate me the most, but 
I'm really happy with how it looks. Looking at my measurements, I knit these sleeves to about two inches less than what the pattern suggests just to, you know, meet my measurements and not be too long. With drop shoulder sweaters, I feel like sleeve length is the trickiest to figure out because the sleeve is comprised of a lot of the body. And before you block a stockinette drop shoulder sweater, this stockinette kind of curls in on itself right here and your sleeve appears a lot shorter than what it will be once it's blocked and the body is allowed to open up and stretch out and therefore make your sleeve a lot longer. So when I'm knitting sleeves, I like to have them hit about here while knitting them, knowing that blocking will lengthen them a bit. And in drop shoulders, I might aim for something a little bit shorter because I know it gets a little bit longer as opposed to in a raglan. You don't get as extreme of sleeve lengthening with blocking. So I might knit a raglan sleeve just a little bit longer past my wrist bone before binding off. And then that gives me a sleeve length to about here when my arm is down there, but you can't see it down there. So I'm holding it up here. In general, I really love this sweater. I did get a chance to wear it this past weekend. We took a little weekend trip up to Maine. We were in Rangeley, which I've never been before, but it's a beautiful area. We got some snow, there was a beautiful pond, and I took some pictures on there, and it was just a really cozy knit to wear in that winter weather. I would say it was around, you know, freezing temperature, not significantly lower than that, but also not significantly higher than freezing temperature, so just like a good cold winter day, and it was really cozy to wear. I absolutely love the Surrey lace yarn. It's so soft. I definitely love it more than mohair. There's absolutely no prickliness and it just gives the whole fabric a very like kind of velvety feel. Like I definitely want to opt for using more Surrey in the future, but it is a lot thicker than silk mohairs. And especially while knitting this, I noticed that the fabric was a lot denser than other fabrics that I've knit with like a silk mohair and a fingering weight wool held on four millimeter needles. This definitely has a little bit more density, but nothing crazy where I don't dislike this fabric. I just think in the future, I might opt to go up a needle size to give a little bit more flow to the fabric. Obviously that's very specific to the Surrey Alpaca lace yarn that I used. This was from Birch and Lily, and this is actually a currently discontinued base. I do know that they have since switched their Surrey Alpaca lace base to a thinner one that I think would probably give me the effect that I'm looking for in the future, just a little bit more airy of a fabric. I know that our new base also has more yardage, so obviously, you know, look at the yardage you're getting on your bases and plan accordingly if you're trying to knit, you know, a fabric and want to be conscious of how dense it's going to be. I really like the fit of the sweater, really like the feel of the fabric. I love the boxy fit. Mine has a total of 12 inches of positive ease on me, very oversized, but I really enjoy how it looks with the drop shoulder construction. I really love the angled shoulder shaping of it and combined with the two by two ribbing it just it looks really nice I definitely like the oversized fit more in this drop shoulder than my October sweater which is a raglan with about the same amount of positive ease I think I just like the styling of the drop shoulder more and the curved hem is fun I think it's a fun little accent I don't love it though like I'm not I don't dislike it but I don't love it where I don't think I would do one again and I don't think this has anything to do with the pattern it's just like the existence of a curved hem like it could be any pattern with a curved hem and I think I just don't really love how it looks it gives like a little bit of like a bubbling around my hips which I don't really enjoy too much I think if I'm opting for like a high low hemline in the future I would go for a split hem I would definitely prefer a split hem over the curved hem but the curved hem was fun to knit with the short rows and it's definitely something different and again I don't dislike it I just don't think I'm gonna do it again in the future I was able to measure my curved hem length because I know last episode I said I knit it to a little bit shorter than what the pattern said to knit it to, but I didn't have measurements and now I have measurements. So in the pattern, you do knit the curved hem to be about four inches longer in the back than in the front. Mine measures about two and three quarter inches longer in the back than the front. So I cut off about an inch and a quarter just to shorten things up a bit. I didn't want it super long in the back and I am really happy with, you know, the finished dimensions that I have. In general, my body is two inches shorter than what the pattern recommended as well. I know it's hard to keep track of all of these, but just in general, like sleeves and body and the back hem, everything is about two inches shorter than what the pattern recommended. I always like to share that just because I know people like to know how much yarn I use for my projects and I 
you know, how much yarn you use is super dependent on how long you make things. So I never want to say that I use, you know, this amount of yarn without telling you how long or short I made something compared to the pattern. So that gives you a little bit more context on the shaping and sizing of my sweater. Really happy with this project, really happy to have it off my needles. I love the color. I love that I have kind of this neutral speckly sweater to add to my wardrobe. I think I'm gonna be able to wear it maybe a few times before it gets too hot. You know, we're definitely getting some cooler weather here. Even today, it's like, rainy and it was kind of frosty this morning so <laughs> we're not fully out of sweater season yet and i know i had some hiccups along the way with this pattern and there being an error in it that wasn't caught until you know after i had knit past the error but that's all been resolved you know the current pattern for sale is i think much better than what the original copy was because I do have access to both and lots of improvements and I know the pattern designer has said that they're taking actions to make sure their patterns are accurately translated so there was that hiccup I, I kind of forgot about it but after all that you know the sweater got completed I really like it and yeah happy to have it off my needles I do have one other finished object to share with you all and that is my Manhattan hat so the Manhattan hat is a pattern by Tori Yu. It's a one by one ribbed beanie with this cool crown shaping that I still don't know if there's like a name for this type of crown shaping, but you know, it looks like that and it's kind of asymmetrical because you can't really fold it the other way without it looking, I mean, it has a shape, it's just different. Anyway, <laughs> this was really fun to knit. I knit this with Knit Picks High Desert Worsted in the color Quail. This is the label. This was sent to me by Knit Picks because I'm part of their affiliate program. So if you're interested in trying it, there is a link in the description box that you can use to shop it. The High Desert Wool is a 100% American grown and spun wool. It's a 75% merino, 25% rambouillet, non-superwash yarn. It comes in a variety of different bases. This is the Worsted weight base there's also a sport weight base and then there's a tweed base that I think is sport weight I don't know if the tweed comes in worsted as well but it might and yeah the color quail is this really nice slate gray color this is like a non heathered color so it's pretty solid there are some like heathered or marbled colors in the line as well for my beanie, I made the size adult medium, which is supposed to fit my head circumference. I use four millimeter needles and it's knit from the bottom up. So you do start at the end here. I use a tubular cast on, which is what is recommended in the pattern. I definitely think tubular cast ons are worth the effort and time. Honestly, I don't think they're that difficult as well. I think they can be intimidating and your first tubular cast on is probably not gonna be your best, but I think it's worth taking the time to master it because it just creates this beautiful edge that really can't be beat by like any other cast on. So you knit the hat from the bottom up and then there are actually two different instructions for the crown shaping, which I think is really cool. So you can either choose to have your decreases be knit on the right side and your decreases will be made purl wise, or you can choose to knit your decreases inside out. So you knit them knit wise and then when you're finished with those decreases, you end up turning your hat inside out for the right side to be facing out, if that makes sense. I think that's cool because with one by one ribbing, I know a lot of people have a lot of differences with whether their right side of the ribbing looks better than their wrong side. I feel like mine doesn't really look that different. So this is the wrong side facing out. And this is the right side facing out. I feel like it looks kind of the same, but I do know a lot of knitters have a lot of discrepancy with how their ribbing looks. So that's a great way to sort of, you know, if tackle that if you want your wrong side on the right side this gives you the option i guess it also gives you a choice if you don't like decreasing purl wise and prefer decreasing knit wise with the purl wise decreases the finishing is done with a kitchener stitch or like a grafting method and if you do the knit wise decreases the finishing is done with a three needle bind off so pretty cool like construction i wonder what motivated the designer to include both of those definitely really appreciated love the ability of choice within a pattern. So like I said before, I did the pearl wise decreases, which means my right side as I was knitting it is my current right side. And then I did finish with a Kitchener stitch at the top. Um, I will say the Kitchener stitch for the one by one rib, I have not figured out. <laughs> Can you see how it doesn't line up? 
I follow directions online specifically for one by one ribbed Kitchener stitch and it just it just didn't work. I don't know. I'm not blaming the directions. I completely think it's a me thing and I had tried it twice and it still didn't work and I was like, eh, I could undo it again and try it again or I could just live with the fact that I know no one is really going to see it from far away. And so that's what I did. So I ended up with a jogged Kitchener stitch at the top. We'll still need to investigate what I did wrong and why it doesn't line up, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a problem for the next hat, but you can't really see it when I'm wearing it. I don't think anyone's gonna notice. And I think the fit of the hat is really cool. It's got that tightness from the one by one rib, but I think the tall crown makes it look more stylish than if it had just like ended or I don't know. It has enough volume where I don't really mind the interesting poof. I know it's a stylistic choice. Some people don't love this like shape poof as much. I think in general the ribbing makes it tighter on my head than my brownstone beanie which is stockinette and then also has the same poof. I think style wise I do prefer the brownstone beanie with the stockinette poof versus the ribbed poof but this is a super comfortable hat to wear. It's also really warm. I did wear it in Maine where we were outside for a good amount of time and it kept my ears and forehead warm. I also have no forehead itchiness, which is amazing. I do have a decent amount of hats that give me forehead itchiness if I wear them for too long, but did not experience anything with this hat. And I wore it for like at least a few hours. So I really like this hat. I really enjoyed this pattern. Like Tori used other hat patterns. This comes in a variety of sizes, ranging from baby to adult large. There are different versions of the pattern. So this is the Manhattan hat for worsted weight yarn. There's the Manhattan hat light for sport weight yarn, the Manhattan hat bulky for bulky weight yarn. Those are three separate patterns that you can purchase. I would definitely make this again and I really enjoyed the yarn as well. I gave it a good word in the last episode and now that I've finished knitting with it and I have worn it and blocked it, I really like the finished fabric. Like I said, it didn't cause any itchiness. It is super smooth. It is like light and lofty, but it's still very warm and sturdy. I feel like the only thing I might be concerned about is pilling. It seems like it has that softness that might pill pretty easily with a lot of wear. I don't know if you can see along that edge, it's like a little bit fuzzy, but I obviously haven't worn it long enough for it to pill any significant amount. So I'll have to keep you guys posted on that, but I would definitely use this yarn again. I did also only use 81 grams of the 100 gram skein to make this size hat, the adult medium. So I have a little bit left over and good to know that I can knit this without needing more than one skein of yarn. Moving on to my works in progress. I will say these past two weeks have been very light on knitting. I did spend the last week not only in Maine, but then I was also traveling for a work trip. So not a lot of progress you'll see on my projects. The first one I'll talk about is my Aurelia pullover. So I've been working on the Aurelia pullover by Sari Nordland. It's this beautiful cabled sweater with you know, all over cables and texture and double moss stitch. There's twisted rib. This is a DK weight knit and I'm knitting it on four and a half millimeter needles. The yarn that I'm using is Sorella Yarns Classic DK in the color Folklore. And it's a hand dyed yarn, so I feel like it adds a lot of cool dimension to the fabric. And I started the first sleeve. You can see here the sleeve and apologies if you can hear my little row counter dangling. I'll try to hold it so it doesn't make too much noise, but I started one sleeve and boy, has it been a journey. <laughs> There's a lot going on in the sleeve. So obviously you do have to continue knitting the cable pattern. There are decreases worked into the sleeve, just like with a lot of sleeves, they have, you know, regular interval decreases. And I am trying to continue fading my skeins of hand dyed yarn. So there's no like color blocking in the sleeve. So I am currently knitting with two balls of yarn and alternating every other row. I'm using magic loop because it's a pretty small circumference. So there's a lot to keep track of at once and it has been, you know, not a headache, but it hasn't been easy to work on. I definitely need dedicated time to sit down and work on it. I can't just squeeze in a row every now and then because I have to, you know, tally what row of the chart I'm on and then tally what row of the decreases I'm on, figure out which skein of yarn I'm working with. <laughs> These sleeves are gonna take forever. So this is what I could get done knitting in one week. You can see the underarm there. It's maybe about like four inches of knitting. I mean, it does look beautiful, but I think 
the finishing of the sweater is gonna be a long time from now. I'm even tempted to pick up some shorties because the magic loop I think is the biggest issue with all of this going on. Magic Loop I use all the time because I prefer it over DPNs, but I 100% prefer knitting just straight in the round over Magic Loop. And I've never invested in a set of shorty needles where I can just, you know, have this on a single needle without needing to like swap out the Magic Loop side every time. I might just go to my yarn store and pick up one shorty needle so I can do this sleeve in the round <laughs> just to make my life a little bit easier. This is my Aurelia pullover. Slow but steady, getting through this one. My next project is my Berlin scarf. It's a pattern by Suzanne Euler, and I was knitting this as part of the fluffy scarf cowl that I am co-hosting with Originally Lovely. That has since ended, and I think by now, by the time this upload goes live, I will have picked the winners and we will have contacted them already. So a huge thank you for everyone who participated. It has been so fun to see everyone's projects on Instagram and, you know, share this like knitting community time together, all knitting similar projects. So my fluffy scarf is not finished. It is still a work in progress. I have been knitting this out of originally lovely fluff in the color snow. I am knitting this on six and a half millimeter needles. And at this point, I finished my fourth ball of fluff, so I decided to go ahead and start the fringe on my cast-on end. So you might recall that this end used to be on a, it was part of a provisional cast-on, so it was on a crochet chain of stitches, and there are directions in the pattern about how to take that out, how to set it up on your needles, and start the fringe. So although this is knit as a tube, you do end up kind of splitting it in half like that, and then you rearrange the stitches so they're all on one needle, and then it tells you how to add these fringes, which are knit in sort of a double knitting style. They're all knit separately. You do need to add new and break the yarn for every single fringe, so there are a lot of ends. There's like two ends for every fringe, and I'm gonna have to go back and weave those all in the inside of the tube before I go back to the other end and close it off with this fringe, which means that finishing off this fringe and weaving in those ends might be a little bit tricky <laughs> without having access to the inside of the scarf. That's a problem for future me to figure out. So I've only gotten about half of the fringes done on here. I'll be honest, this has been really tedious and it's been not my favorite thing to knit. I think I got through these ones and then I had to put it down because I just couldn't continue it. I don't know why I found it like, it wasn't difficult, it's just annoying. You're doing double knitting, but you're only doing it across a very small amount of stitches. You're constantly turning back and forth and, you know, having to join new yarn every time and figure out how long you need to knit them before binding off because I was not smart and didn't count how many rows I was knitting at a time. So I think my fringes are not even. Hopefully that's okay. <laughs> I think I might, when I block it, stretch the shorter ones to be longer and not stretch the longer ones so they look a little bit more even but you know now that's on camera it looks way worse than what i thought it looked like but the idea of going back and redoing these fringes so they're all exactly the same amount of rows i think gives me more pain than knowing that these are not all even <laughs> that's my status on the berlin scarf so far working through it i think i want it to be long enough to wrap around my neck once and then come back down. I know I've been saying this whole time I don't know how long I want the scarf to be and I don't want it to be too long, but I do really like how it looks on other people where they wrap it around their neck. So I'm gonna try to knit it that long. I, I may dip into my sixth ball of fluff, I'm not sure, because I'm on ball number five for the fringe. The fringe is obviously not gonna take any significant amount of yarn from ball number five, so once I'm done with the fringe, I'll continue with ball number five and see how long that gets me. And then also I might try to guesstimate how long it'll grow when it blocks, because it will grow a bit with blocking, and I think I can maybe mimic that by like stretching it and seeing, well, how long is it when it's stretched? <laughs> really fun project, and I'm looking forward to wearing it next year when it's finished <laughs> at this rate. It's definitely gonna be finished after it's too cold to wear it so but it's been really fun to knit and i really like the yarn it's like super soft and cozy i can tell this is going to keep me immensely warm in the really cold days next winter and it's been really fun to knit this as part of the fluffy scarf cow my next project to share i have a lot of progress on and i'm really excited to talk about it 
It's my Stella Quilt Cushion. The Stella Quilt Cushion is a pattern by Laura Penrose. It's a pillow cover that's knit out of garter stitch squares and you can make one of two motifs. I'm doing motif number two, which is this beautiful star pattern. And the yarns that I'm using for this are the Sorella Yarn Winter Tonal Mini Set that was gifted to me. And then for my main color, I'm using Sorella Yarn Classic DK in the color Townhouse. This was frogged from my Whitmore Cardigan, so I've actually gotten a chance to knit up the frogged yarn. I know some people had questions on that, and I can finally say that knitting with the frogged and washed yarn, I feel no difference than if this was brand new. So that's really exciting. This has been so fun to knit. I Once I started it, I couldn't put it down. I feel like the idea that you work one square at a time makes it really exciting, really potato chippy, because you just want to do the next square, especially since every square is different with the different colors. I think it's really fun fun to finish one square and then open up the pattern and see ooh what color combo is in the next square and yeah, it's just been really fun to knit. So I was able to get all of this done in one week. I think it takes me about one hour to complete each square. I'm knitting each square on four millimeter needles. This is a DK weight knit or the pattern also has directions for Aran weight yarn, but I'm doing the DK weight version. Obviously I'm holding the DK weight townhouse yarn single, but for the mini skeins, which are fingering weight, I am holding them double. This is Sorella Yarns nylon sock base, which is an 80-20 two ply superwash merino nylon blend. I do notice that the fingering weight yarn held double is just a little bit thicker and denser than the single strand of DK weight yarn, but nothing that really matters for this pillow cover, just an interesting observation for me. And I do knit left-handed, so my construction of this star does start in this direction. Just start with this square and then it goes in this direction. And then my second row, I started with this square and I'm working in this direction, which is mirrored from the original pattern directions. I was able just to flip the schematic in Canva, like flip it horizontally, which gives me the mirror image. And then that allows me to follow the written instructions word for word and get the same result. It's a very specific tip that you will only need if you're left-handed, but because this is a very directionally based pattern, it was a little bit intimidating at first to figure out if I would have to adjust it left-handed and just flipping the schematic really helps me figure it all out. That being said, the pattern is extremely well written. It really holds your hand through creating each square. Some of them have different methods of being knit than others. It creates beautiful joins. Like I just love how smooth all of these squares connect and from the right side, it looks so polished. It looks so good. Even like the direction of the garter stitch changes. And I think it's very curated to create a beautiful finished piece. This is the back side, which you can see where you join the yarn with the garter stitch, it sort of shows through. You can see the edges where you pick up or where you decrease, and some of the squares are knit with short rows, and it just, it just all looks so good. I have been making sure to weave in and cut all my ends before moving on to the next square, just to save myself any headaches later on, because there are a lot of ends to weave in. And also it helps because some of the ends affect the tension of the joins. So I really like, you know, pulling on those, making sure those joins are nice and tight and weaving those in and securing those ends before moving on to the rest of the pattern. Really fun to see this knit up. I definitely am looking forward to continuing working on this and seeing how all the colors in the palette will come together. It's gonna be a big pillow, but it's gonna be a beautiful pillow. I haven't even previewed yet how to knit the back yet. The back is gonna be knit all in the main color. I feel like that might be a little bit more tedious because instead of 16 small inviting squares, <laughs> it's one giant square that might be a little bit boring, but that's okay. It'll be fun to finish this up and have a nice hand knit pillow for the bed here. My last work in progress that I'll share is a new cast on and it is the Huga Burst Blanket by Mallory Crawl. This is a crochet blanket pattern that I've been super excited to start working on. I haven't crocheted a major project in a long time and I was really inspired when I received a beautiful generous shipment of hand dyed yarns from Arcane Fiberworks. It was a gift, just a ton of different variegated colors. A lot of them kind of coordinated or they had similar color themes like lots of pinks and blues and light 
light blush colors and I thought it'd be fun to pick a few of those colors from the Arcane Fiberworks yarns and make a very large blanket out of them. The Hugo Burst Blanket is a DK weight crochet blanket. You make crochet sunburst granny squares. There is a paid pattern version on Ravelry but there is also a free blog version that I'm following and what mostly inspired me to make this project. In the blog version of the pattern, the yarns used was a curated collection from Hugh Loco, I believe, in DK Weight Yarns, and I really liked how that blanket looked with these single yarn granny squares as opposed to using multiple colors in a single granny square. So that's the like aesthetic I was going for. When selecting my colors to use for this blanket, I originally said I was gonna pick nine different variegateds, but upon closer look at the pattern, there was actually in the sample blanket seven variegated and two solids so I decided to kind of mimic that and I ended up choosing seven variegated colors from Arcane Fiberworks that I thought went well together and then I picked two solids from my stash that I thought worked well with the whole palette. Now I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time describing how I selected the colors that I wanted to use together because none of these yarns were of like a matching set. They're all like kind of different but kind of similar and I feel like as I was picking them you know I kind of just laid them all out and then tried to pick bunches that I thought looked well together, things with similar colors but enough differences where the squares wouldn't all look the same. I tried to go for some kind of like a fade. You can see there's like a darker set of yarns and then a lighter set of yarns. I also made sure that each variegated yarn had a color that was also in another color of another variegated so they kind of all tie into each other as well as selecting tonals that tie into at least one or two of the variegateds as well. So I'll put up a picture of the final palette that I selected. If I haven't already put it up, I probably did. I think I'm pretty happy with how it's going to look. You can see there's lots of pinks, some dark purples, and some blues, and I already started making some of the granny squares, and here they are. These I all made last night. I just started. So all the yarns I'm using are fingering weight yarns, so I am holding them double for the pattern and using a G hook, which is four millimeters, and following the free pattern tutorial and Aren't they so cute? So this granny square uses a combination of puff stitches and double crochet cluster stitches to make sort of like a round inner and then it finishes off in a square shape. Really beautiful. This color is jeweled. This is cherry tea. This one is let your dreams blossom. Those were all the Arcane Fiberworks colors, but this is a solid or a tonal that I picked from my stash from Night Bright Yarn Co. This was also gifted to me and is the color Mermaid. So already I really love how these all coordinate together. I can tell when all put together they're gonna make a really cool blanket. Obviously there's a lot of colors that I haven't started making yet, so this doesn't really show the full palette, but I just like how they look. I am excited to make more squares. The squares didn't take me long at all, maybe like 40 minutes per square, 30 minutes, less than that. Crochet is so fast. <laughs> there's only like four rounds per square, so I feel like as soon as you get into the groove, you're like almost done, which is crazy. I am weaving in my ends as I go, again trying to save headaches in the future, and I plan on blocking these in batches. I do need to make 11 squares per color, so I think once I finish a batch of a single color, I'll wet block those all together and then do the same for the other colors. Really excited to continue this throughout the season, the next few months, uh, really is scratching the crochet itch that I have, and I just love how variegated yarn looks in crochet. It just, it's so fun, it's so fun. We're about to head into the acquisition section of the podcast, but before we start that, I do want to announce the giveaway of the Sorry Nordland book and two skeins of Knitting for All of Yarn. Thank you all for entering. In the last episode, I announced that if you commented below, you'd be entered for the giveaway. So I will just put the winner's name on the screen now. So congratulations if this is you, you have won the giveaway. I'm really excited to send you your prize. So please email me at my email, which is right here on the screen, so we can connect and I can get this sent to you as soon as possible. So thanks to everyone who's entered and to whoever the winner is, I hope you enjoy your prize. All right, new yarn to share. I always got new yarn, which is very exciting. <laughs> Um, so first up is a pre-order that I ordered myself and it is from Woolberry Fiber Co. This was from their, oh, the Best of 2023 collection, 
went open for pre-order I think in February and I really wanted to try the new base that they announced for that order and I think now it's like a currently available base and this is Berry Rambouillet Worsted. So this is a 100% Rambouillet wool, American grown and spun, I think not too far from where Woolberry is located so it's like local to them and it's a non-superwash yarn, worsted weight so there is 200 yards in this 100 gram skein. So I got the color It's Bread, which is such a hilarious name because it's a brown red. So I think bread just combines the two color names. And this is definitely one of those colors that shifts depending on the light. You know, it could look more red in some lights and more brown in other lights. It's a very brick red. It definitely is warm, which, you know, it's not very common for me to knit with warm yarns, but I think it'll still work. I mean, nothing doesn't work, but I like the color, so I'm gonna knit with it. <laughs> I don't knit too many worsted weight garments so I'm excited to have this worsted weight sweater quantity in my stash. I got five skeins total which is cutting it close for a sweater quantity for my size with worsted weight. I think if I really wanted to be safe with every worsted weight pattern for a sweater I would get six skeins but I was trying to like save on costs because it's expensive so I got five and I'm hoping I can squeeze out maybe a cropped garment out of this. I am thinking of Sorry Nord Lynn's a Sopo cardigan from the book to make with this. It's a worsted weight pattern and the cropped version I think would fit in the amount of yardage I have for this yarn. Really excited to see how this Rambouillet knits up. You can see it's a two-ply yarn. It feels really lofty and soft and brushed. You know, it feels similar to the Knit Picks High Desert Wool that Rambouillet as well, but this is 100% Rambouillet, so pretty cool. I do have some other yarn that I received recently from a pre-order which is very exciting and I ordered some yarn from Birch and Lily's One More Scoop collection and I say it's a pre-order but Amanda's so fast so <laughs> I ordered one skein of the color Lavender Honey. The One More Scoop collection was an ice cream themed collection which was really fun. So this is in the Birch Sock which is a two-ply 80-20 sock yarn and it's this beautiful like cooler tone gray that I think is kind of of lavender based and then of course all these beautiful speckles are definitely what sold me on the yarn there's some yellow blue brown I think really fun and then I got the same exact colorway in the new birch surrey base which is convenient because I totally forgot when I was talking about the old birch surrey base that I have the new base as well so compared to the old one this the old one the 74 percent surrey and 26 percent silk had 328 yards per 50 grams this is 65 percent surrey and 35 percent silk so it's a lower surrey content and a higher silk content but way more yardage there's 437 yards in this 50 gram skein which is almost doing some quick math 80 yards more in the new base so it feels a little bit thinner less dense and a little bit silkier and the speckles on here blend out a lot more as you can expect with a fuzzy base and I don't really have specific project plans for these two yet I would love to hold them together could make a small scarf could make a beanie um, some sort of accessory and I'm just really excited to have these in my yarn stash and the last thing I want to share with you all today is the new spring collection from Sorella Yarn. I am an affiliate with Sorella, so they did send me all of their spring tonal mini set. So if you're familiar with Sorella, every season they have a curated palette of in-stock tonals that are available on a limited amount of bases, but they're ready to ship, so they have a much shorter processing time than a traditional pre-order of their yarn and they usually have 10 colors in the season and this spring they introduced five new colors to the palette in addition to the previous 10. So I have all of them here. For the minis, they're 20 gram minis on the nylon sock base. So I believe this was the original set of 10 and the spring palette from Sorella has always been my favorite seasonal palette of theirs. It just is so pretty. I love how it's pastel, but like not everything is a pastel. Like there are some saturated colors. One of my favorites is Pinot Noir, which I actually knit my Lanakai Summer Tea out of 
Pinot Noir last year, and I knit it out of the Bamboo Sock Base, which is a spring exclusive base for Sorella. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% bamboo fingering weight. So this is the color Pinot Noir in that bamboo base. I really liked knitting with it and wearing it. And you can see how it takes the dye a lot differently than the classic superwash yarns. It's a little bit less saturated and a little bit more heathered. So if you are looking at the bamboo sock base, I think this will give you a good color comparison for what you can expect in the bamboo base versus a regular base. But the bamboo base is really drapey. It has some like shininess and springiness to it, um, like bounce. I think it is pilling like a bit. I don't know if you can see kind of like the fuzzies coming off of it, but nothing major. It definitely is a little bit warmer of a fiber than like a true like cotton yarn or a silk yarn because it's 80% merino wool. These were the five new colors that they introduced this year to the palette. You can see they added a lot more dark colors, some saturated colors to kind of balance out the like very pastelliness of the original 10. And I think altogether they make a beautiful set. It pretty much covers the whole rainbow in a really beautiful way. Sorella also sent me their spring wool wash scent to try out. This is the French linen scent and it smells really good. Like it's very like crisp and kind of laundry smelling in a good way. The scent notes are cotton, gardenia, and eucalyptus. I actually use this to block this sweater and I just really enjoyed the scent. This one is very like crisp and neutral and fresh smelling. And they also sent me the season's tea, which is called La Vie en Rose. And it's a really good smelling blend of strawberry, cranberry, currants, and rose buds. So this one is very sweet and fruity. I've already tried it, it's pretty good. It's very like, I don't wanna say springy because that's just too obvious, but it's a very like refreshing cup of tea. And I haven't tried it iced yet, I've just had it hot, but I think it would be really good iced as well. So the Sorella Spring Collection is available now through May, like I said, on a ready to ship basis. And all of these colors are available on a variety of different bases, as well as the wool wash and the teas and other market items. If you're interested in shopping, I do have an affiliate link in the description of this video. And if you use my affiliate link, I get some of the sale at no extra cost to you. So it's a way that you can support me and my channel if you choose to. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you all so much for watching and joining me today. I hope you have a great week and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.